upgrade issues. Frank and Arlo. We're not going to be sending this thing to the trash just yet. It's not going to be big black food. There's too many good parts in this that I just can't. No, this is not going to be food for big black. Um, but before I go ahead and completely ditch uh, this idea, there was one, not one last resolve. There's one last thing that I kind of want to try. And the reason why I'm going to try this is because um, I feel like it would give me a better idea of whether this setup is even going to work. It actually might be a better motor. So this is the setup that was originally in the RC car. I then, well actually no it's not. Sorry I shouldn't have said it that way. This thing is the original motor that was in that car. It had a massive pinion on it and I thought to myself oh this is going to be an easy swap. I'll just go ahead and stick a brushless system in it and we'll get ripping. Well, there was a problem with that. While I'm able to use this motor mount with this motor and that pinion, the KV of this motor is far too great to run this truck the way it is. Um, I did run it on 2S. That's all I needed. I got 43 miles an hour with 2S. I, I thought that was pretty dang good. But that's speed gearing. And I knew that. But I wanted to see... You kind of sometimes need to see what's there. Um, and then I thought, I thought, easy swap. I'll just go ahead and throw in this uh, 2300 KV motor. It's the same size and just a lower KV. And it should be able to provide the extra torque that it needs. Well, I ended up finding out that the holes don't line up to anything. So the motor mount, it just, it just doesn't work. And then I'm like thinking... You know, can I take a drill bit and drill holes? I like I was losing it. I was really thinking some crazy thoughts. Now, uh, this motor right here kind of got me thinking. Only reason why is because when you twist, because I can twist this one off. This is the motor that failed. This is a uh, 3800 KV. So effectively, it's the same exact KV. But this motor, the motor... Uh, the, the front motor cover pinion side twisted off just while running the, the vehicle. They sent me out a motor, which this was a failed rotor, which I can't pull it out right now. Fingers are all greasy. If you look at this, though, this has two locations for um, two setups. So, like, this motor cover will fit two different slots. So, what's funny is that I'm pretty sure the outer holes are the outer holes with this, but the inner holes, the inner holes are the same as this, or I should show you this motor mount, are the same as this, I think. Let me see. Hold on. Houston, we could have a problem. Uh, I'm just doing this off the cuff. I'm not not inspecting nothing I'm literally just showing you the process of sometimes it's it's stinking painful man yeah so these line up so these two holes line up so basically it would place it in the same location so I could still use the factory motor mount with the factory pinion provided I could unscrew this cover with possibly a little heat, it might be uh, Loctited. And then just take needle nose pliers and use it like a, um, what the heck is it called? I forget what that tool is called. There's a, there's a specific name for the type of tool that you use, a spanner wrench. I think it's called a spanner wrench. And what it does is it spans the two holes and might, be able to untwist this and twist on this one. That would allow me to use this 2300 kV motor. The other thing, uh, right here, the other thing that I have, which is uh, basically I'll be fully going down 1000 kV, actually 1100 kV. I got this motor. This is a Habao motor from my 
I think this is from my TT Pro. So this is a motor from my Habao TT. Not TT Pro, sorry. A Habao motor from my TT. This obviously fits the wider screw pattern, right? But man, it comes so close to the very bottom, but it also might be a benefit. Because this is such a heavy motor, I mean, it's heavy. Let's um, get some weight differences just to show you what I'm talking about. <coughs> All right, so I got my scale here. Put it on. Now, the motor that I would have been putting in was this. It's basically, how did I do this? All right, how about if I do this? This was the motor that was originally in the vehicle. This motor comes in at, I wanna make sure it's fully supported. Basically 209 grams. Then the motor that I kind of wanted to put in was this one. 114. The motor that I may have to put in just for now is this one. Coming in at 176. So it's still lighter in weight. This might be the way to go. I just don't know if the ESC is going to like this size motor. We'll see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to install this motor inside Frank and Arlo. So if you want to watch this episode from RC Guy Garage, I know that was a long, drawn-out explanation, but sometimes you have to use what you have. Sometimes you have to use what you have on hand in order to move forward. So potentially if this works, that means that slidable motor mount, that'll work because that slidable motor mount is not designed for this smaller hole pattern. It is designed for, oh, you keep losing it. It is designed for the larger hole pattern. So it'll work with the larger pattern. So let's, um, See if I can get this motor installed. Like I was saying, the one issue, the one issue that could be a possible issue is the actual uh, can size. But then again, it might be all right because I suspect if this sits flat against the chassis, technically the chassis is going to help support this honking motor. So. Let's just, uh, let's dive into this and then, you know, if, if this works, I may be able to go ahead and switch over to this setup. Gotta try it, man. I literally just have to try it. And Hosim, Hosim actually did send me the differential for uh, that other vehicle. I do have the differential for that Hosim vehicle that, uh, I don't even know what the, the thing that looks like a Revo. So the plan is to go ahead and put this motor in here. I just need the other, I need this motor mount because this is the one that this is the one that I need and it will mount up to those two holes right there. Actually, I don't even need to do. Yeah, I'm just going to, Never mind. I got the other motor mine. I could have just used that. And I could have kept this together. But with a bigger can motor like that, is it possible that this isn't going to have a heat issue? So... So you can see it lines up. See what I'm saying, man? That is so close. That is literally like right there. Makes me wonder if that screw is going to be able to be fully tight. 
Might not be. But at this point, I don't care. <laughs> at this point, I don't care. It's been a lot of people. I've noticed that have enjoyed this series. And um, that's awesome. Oh, that screw just stripped. Why did that screw strip? This driver is awesome. Yeah, well, I guess it's just going to have to stay like that. Then this pinion is going to go on. If I remember right, it gets buried right to the thing there. That was pretty tight. So let's see if this, before I even did that, I probably should have just hooked this up. Let's see if it even likes this motor. We'll just hook up the ESC. Um, blindly, just like this. Uh, I need a battery. Little 2S battery. I think this thing still has some juice in it. And the remote. Let's see what we got. That 1,000 kV slower, that might be the ticket. That might be the ticket, man. That actually feels pretty good. That's got some torque to it. All right, we're going to give this a shot. That really is, I mean, that's on the edge of, like, see right there where that flat is. That very edge is kind of like right there. You can see the can's got a dent on it. All right. good with this setup oh I wonder if that's gonna reach will those wires reach yeah I think they will I need the two screws that need to go in there what holes what did this take? Oh, this did take the small screws. I'm really afraid to crank these things down because I don't want them to break off. It feels tight. Do also have to replace this arm. That arm is bent. It's causing the steering to be messed up. They actually drove straight, but... All right, we're good there. So, um... Uh, where's the bearing? bearing for the steering so what I do have to see is um, 
What do I have to take apart to get that off? I gotta take the front bumper off. So I can do chassis brace and everything. I can put everything back together. Um, I don't have to worry about uh, anything. So we can go ahead and fit this back on. All the screws should literally be right in here. Just gotta remember to do the washers for the um, differentials front and rear. Put everything on kind of loosely for now. These almost, almost need to be thread locked, but the problem is, what I worry is that if they're too tight, it'll bind. I think it's okay. We'll find out. So, with the little washers. Give it a crank, just not too much. This washer's definitely made a big difference. I'll go ahead and give these a crank. These two don't matter. These can be cranked. Keep everything nice and tight. Now, figure out motor rotation. I'm just going to go ahead and plug it in as is as seen type of deal. Because otherwise, I'm going to have to switch. All right, so. Now, got the wires hooked up to the motor. I do have a battery pack plugged in. Motor mount is all screwed down. Motor fits snug. <laughs> do have the remote, gonna go ahead and power that on. All I wanna do is just make sure that my motor rotation is correct. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to switch two wires. And it's right. <laughs> nice. All right, so I'm gonna give this a little bit of a spin up just to see where we're at. Whoa. This might be the setup. Now, you can see one wheel's not spinning. I think this is going to be the setup. Wow. I wonder if this might just have to stay this way. So go ahead and plug in the servo right now, just to make sure. Do it again. Oh, God. <laughs> Got to plug a battery in first, guy. Getting ahead of myself here. All right. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, charge up this battery for now, just so we can keep moving forward. I am going to replace this arm. That dog bone is disconnected, but I'm going to go ahead and now replace this arm. So I just want to pull off these two screws here so we can go ahead and start to remove the bumper. There's two more screws we need to remove. And that is the two screws that are here and here. And that will allow the bumper to come away from the uh, bumper bracket. And that wire is right there. So now we need to remove this screw right here, which is a pin that will slide that out. There's also a screw here and a screw here. So the screw for the shock and the screw for the uh, pin retainer. So we'll go ahead and go after the pin retainer. Now on the back side, you need something to be able to push that pin through. I know you heard that. <laughs> you heard a flood, a waterfall of screws. So, go ahead and push that out. Go ahead and grab it with a pair of needle nose or whatever you got. Pull that out. That's the pin for the um, C hub. That'll swing away. Don't lose the pin. 
then go ahead and go after this screw right here which like I said this is for uh, this is usually oh wow I think this pin is bent oh wait a minute what's going on here so the pin does have a um, nylock so that's going to be interesting to grab that I think I'm going to take the tire off make it a little bit easier to see what I'm doing here so there's a nylock that's right in there so I need something to press down so I'm going to go ahead and put the tire underneath let's see if I can grab this and then grab a better screwdriver it has a little bit better of a bite on it. Try not to be in the way here. There we go. Wow, that screw is bent. It's coming out though. If I remember right, I think they provided lower hinge pin screws. I think. Now, let's remove the lower shock screw. Slide that out of there. Now, I've got to grab that pin. So that pen has definitely seen better days. Now I can uh, I can go ahead and straighten that, but I'm gonna check the parts bag. But look at that, it's just bent. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that that was a factory bend, man. But let's um, check the parts. Look at that. New lower pins, check that out. That's a brand new lower pin. So we can go ahead and scrap that, scrap that on. Got a new lower pin, and then I believe these arms are all the same. Let's just compare, just to make sure. And, yep, that's the one I need. Wow, look at how much, look how bent that thing is. Slide that into place. Make sure that goes all the way through. Here we go. And the fun part is gonna be getting this back into place. And it was actually a little bit easier than I thought it was going to be. Check that out. I think maybe because the other one was bent, I guess. That went in there perfect. Now put the shock in place. Now the shock position was the outer hole. Now slide the dog bone into place. Put the C-hub into place. Put the pin in. A tiny little retainer screw. And that's obviously gonna be cutting its own threads. Now that screw doesn't need to be cranked just when it settles down. Matter of fact, it's not working at all. So, I'm not even going to do that. Alright, so this link. So, slide that over. We are going to go ahead and just pop a link off of the um, other buggy. Just so that we can get this thing going. 
So this will be the um, length that we're going to use. Let's go ahead and just fix this vehicle for now. Here we go. Easy as that. Now, the hex stayed on the wheel. Got to make sure we key that into place. Take our little flange nut here. This is where you got to also be careful with these. Um, these are nylocks, but the nylocks are very cheap. So you may want to go ahead and thread lock this. I'm not going to do it for now. Um, but these wheels are having a tendency to want to come loose. So just go ahead and do that. Make sure we're on tight, tight. That's tight. And that one's tight. Now we're going to go ahead and reinstall the bumper. So we'll flip that slot in there. Oh, sounds like a battery's ready. Make sure I'm going to feed that wire in right now. Line up the two holes and put these screws in. Now the more and more you take these things apart, the weaker and weaker the receiving portion of the plastic gets. So you have to be careful each and every time you do this. Don't over torque. Plastic you can over torque so easy. So the next thing we need to do is uh, reinstall the battery tray. So that's this piece right here. And we're going to need two screws. Two screws that obviously have taper to them. Now this battery tray goes this way. So what I'll do is line it up on the bottom. Take one screw. Attempt to thread that one screw in. Just so it can be retained. There you go. Before we tighten it down, make sure to line up the other hole. There we go. Tighten it down, but just not too tight. It is just plastic. You'll slowly learn the types of force that these screws take. So that was the original uh, hole for this battery tray. So this, uh, this forward tray was actually in this location holding the smaller packs I wanted to run the extended long packs so it gave that option and what I should have done is I should have ran <laughs> oh no make sure you put the velcro strap under there whoops So I don't have to undo them completely because um, what I can do is undo one completely, have the other one be loose, and then just take the strap and run it underneath like, I know my fingers are in the way, but see what I'm saying? You don't have to take it completely out. So, and we'll put it back upside down. Relocate that piece. I think we're good, man. Just giving these screws just a little tweak. Seems like everything is loose. And that's basically it. This truck is now ready to rip. We're gonna give it a shot. All right, so anyways, this is RC Guy Garage. This I think was part eight or part nine. Um, the next time you see the car is gonna be 
out front with a GPS unit on it. And hopefully, hopefully this Habao 2700 KV motor is going to be the ticket that this thing needed to run better. It needed more torque. It definitely needed more torque. It didn't need the extra weight, but I wanted to put the 2300 KV motor in it. I think that would have been good. I just got to figure out, you know, taking off that and putting it on that one, take this one off. So I may have to use, I think, like I said, I think they call it a spanner wrench. It's just got the two uh, points, but heat up potentially this and then take maybe needle nose, jam them in and kind of give it a twist. It's just obviously I got to wear a glove because I'm going to be heating this thing up. So anyways, RC Guy Garage, I'm out in the uh, trailer trashed mobile shop. What are you doing today? Oh, I bet you thought I forgot I wasn't going to hook up the light. I actually did forget. Let's go plug it in. Plug it in. Come on, guy. Get in there. This stuff is just so tiny to work with, man. You need like micro fingers or something here. I can't do this. Upgrade issues. Frank and Arlo. Definitely more controllable. <laughs>